working as a Pinoy. Um, and I am, I've lived long enough that if anybody challenges what I am or um, tries to belittle what I am, I know enough to fight back and I know I will win because whatever prejudices they may have, I know I can counter. Um, whatever they, they decide to, to say about my being a Chinese, my being, you know, Chinoy, neither here nor there, uh, everything, all of that, I, I stand on solid ground and I, I can answer any one of them. Be sure and catch Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, presented by Chinoy TV. Hi, I'm Janina Chan. I'm a TV host. I'm a podcaster, a columnist, and a content creator. Okay, so for our family, it's kind of like a mix of both traditional and modern. But in terms of upbringing, in terms of how we were raised, me and my sister, by our parents, I think um, it is similar to most families here in the Philippines. You know, we're both um, very family-oriented. Um, I am a part of a very supportive family. so. I'm also grateful that, especially my mom, she's always been supportive ever since I was um, a baby girl. <laughs> Literally started young. And I'm so grateful for um, my family's encouragement and support um, in what I do. Being part of the One Chinoy campaign is definitely such an honor and also a responsibility. <laughs> I am so happy to be here to be able to reflect as well on my identity and I feel more realigned to myself by doing so too. It's definitely been fun and I love knowing more about where I belong. I'm grateful for where I'm going onwards together as One Chinoy community. I'm inviting all of you to watch Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Hello, I'm Nicole Cordobes and I was Miss Chinatown 2014 and Binibining Pilipinas Grand International 2016. I think the biggest misconception is that we are, like, we keep to ourselves. Uh, we don't really, we're not so emotional. Because growing up in a Chinese family, we don't really say, like, we don't state our feelings. We don't show our emotions. We're not touchy at all. <laughs> and our parents don't even give us encouragement. Not that it's not entirely a bad thing, but more of they want us to stay humble. I'm really honored to be part of One Chinoy because I feel like we need to tell our story more. We need to open up a conversation more. And I know that andami nating Chinoy community members na nagahanap ng kausap, nagahanap ng mahuhugutan ng advice. So we need to be more present. We need to be more visible. And I'm inviting you guys to watch Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. I'm Patricia Ngo, and I'm a children's book writer here in the Philippines. Growing up, I didn't see a lot of representation of Chinois, and I think that's why I wasn't really that sure about what it meant to be Chinoy. And eventually, when I reached college, I learned about how culture isn't a pure and static thing. Cultures keep changing just as people do, and 
the Chinoy culture is just one way in which cultures kept changing. And I learned that there wasn't just one way of being Filipino. There were many ways to do so, and being Chinoy was a valid way of being Filipino. I think that this campaign is really important in helping bridge the gap between whatever miscommunications we might have with other cultures and other people. Uh, there are times when people misunderstand what it means to be Chinoy. They don't understand sometimes that the Philippines is still our home and that we are still Filipinos even with our different experiences. And I appreciate that this campaign helps bridge that gap and to clarify those misconceptions that people have. I'm inviting you to watch Chinoy TV Presents, Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. I'm Rob Jam. I'm a illustrator, comic book creator, um, art director, and friend. Well, I just wanted to make comics as a kid. I didn't know it could be a career. Um, I think even if you are from a Filipino family, if they, if you tell them you want to be an artist, they're kind of afraid of it. Um, because yeah, there is such a misconception of how you can make money in art. I know that the Filipino Chinese community or the Chinese community, it's so focused on what's sure to be a successful career path or a successful business or a successful whatever. And then art is such a thing outside of that. I feel very honored to be part of this because, um, yeah, I knew I was always a part of this community, but I've never really felt like recognition from it or that anyone in the Chinese Filipino community or Filipino Chinese community cared because yeah, like there's that whole expectation that they don't know much about art or they see art as just a well, waste of time, that kind of thing. And I'm inviting you to watch Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. My name is Stan C. I'm a radio DJ, a podcaster, a voice talent, an events host, and a writer. All things that you're not expected to be when you're Chinoy. I grew up in a traditional, stereotypical Chinese-Filipino household. So my dad is uh, pure Chinese born in the Philippines. And my mom is, uh, is literal na mestiza because my maternal grandmother uh, was Bisaya. She, uh, she came from Leyte. And the maternal grandfather, ko, who I never met, was an immigrant from China. So I really got it all in the sense that I'm really Chinese Filipino. Ako, and I, I can't just be one without the other. I feel privileged to be part of the One Chinoy campaign because I want to be the voice that starts these uncomfortable conversations. And it's high time that they happen because we have to look at who we are to understand where we come from. And that's a conversation that's long overdue. It's time to shock the system. And I'm inviting you to watch Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Hi, my name is Tim Yap. I'm a host and eventologist. I'm proud to be Chinoy because I know I come from a bloodline of hard work. Uh, I come from a, a place where tough love was the norm, where we always had to work hard to get to where we are. Uh, it was always one step at a time. Nothing was given to us on a silver platter. I love being part of this One Chinoy campaign because uh, it reminds us that we are one, right? That we are 
in a world that's becoming so tribal and uh, you know into each other's only into each other's uh, we need uh, reminders that hey we are all one and the same and I'm inviting you to watch Chinoy TV presents Chinese by blood Filipino by heart Uh, I'm Wilson Lee Flores. I'm in the real estate business. Also, my hobby is writing a column in Philippine Star. I also own a bakery in Quezon City. I have Chinese and I have Filipino culture. That's 100% Filipino, 100% Chinese. So I'm 200% of a 200% of a person. I'm 200% richer as a person. It's not like. Um, yeah, there's no need to balance. I have to continuously learn to be both. Every single culture that enriches us is important. We should always analyze ourselves in order to be better human beings. And our uh, ethnic Chinese minority in the Philippines, uh, non-stop changes. We are experiencing non-stop changes every generation. We should be better. We should always strive to be better. Uh, by uh, cherishing our heritage and our values, learning from our ancestors in order to be a benefit to the Philippines. I'm inviting you to watch Chinoy TV Presents, Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. The modern Chinoy. Where are you from? I said, I'm from the Philippines. But how come you speak Chinese? So there's always that mm, ambiguity. Are you really Filipino or are you Chinese? I've been asking questions all my life, like, am I Filipino enough or am I Chinese enough? And then my uncle looks at me, you do TV? Hello, you're too sinkit. So, meaning ba pag singkit, hindi ka pwede mag-TV? At that time, it was at the height of the island dispute and uh, the Chinois have been at the middle of the crossfire between the Chinese and the Filipinos. So because of that, we decided to address this because um, at that time, a lot of people are confused in terms of the loyalty of the Chinois here. Where does your nationalism or your patriotism lie? Does it lie with where your ancestors come from? Or does it lie with where you were born and raised? So our money legals always ask, Nami great wall by familia niyo. <laughs> Funnily enough, I have never really dated a lot of Chinese girls. They scare me. <laughs> I really would like to grow up like a normal child. I really would like to go to the mall, watch a movie. But had it not been for this training of my parents, I would not be where I am today. We should not lose out our Asian heritage. Yun ang fear ko, yun ang worry ko is uh, it's easy to lose out our Asianness by all these overwhelming Western cultural influences. I want to be the voice that starts these uncomfortable conversations and it's high time that they happen because we have to look at who we are to understand where we come from. No matter how it is run, this is our country. It is our lupang hinirang. We are just in one country, we are in one boat. Do not say why me, just say why not me. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. 
Hashtag One Chinoy is brought to you by Donya Maria Premium Quality Rice, our Filipino farmer's hard work and dedication in every grain. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia Pacific. Our family is not a super traditional Chinese family, but you know, most Chinese families have what I call the big five. So they want their kids to have any of these five professions, right? Businessman, lawyer, doctor, engineer, or architect. Growing up, I just assumed that those were the five things that you could do. So when I watched this cooking show called Walk With Yan, there was this Chinese guy cooking on TV. He held the attention of the entire studio audience. And that really opened my mind about cooking. Like, this might be something that I wanted to do. I knew my parents wouldn't agree. So what I did was I mentioned the possibility of me migrating to Canada. And for me to migrate to Canada, I should study in Canada. So I said, well, there's this culinary school in Canada. You know, if I study there, work there, I might be able to migrate to Canada. And they were like, well, that sounds like a good decision. So they let me go. And then lo and behold, I'm back here, right, cooking. So um, it wasn't exactly the, the easiest route to take um, to get to where I am today. My name is Sharwin T. I'm a chef, television host, and author. So I'll be making three Chinoy dishes today. Each of these dishes are modern interpretations of Chinese dishes but made with Filipino ingredients or Filipino sensibilities. So for our first course, I'm going to make a tzi tan bing. So this is a dish that's very popular in Taiwan. It's one of my favorites whenever I go there. It's basically an, an egg crepe and then it's usually flavored with a sweet and spicy bean paste but I wanted to add my Pinoy flair to it. So we're gonna add my version of uh, an alavar sauce using tabanan talangka and coconut milk. So that way we can get some sweet, salty, and spicy flavors all together. All right, so let's get started. I think the phrase Chinese by blood and Filipino by heart is a pretty good description of what I am. I'm a proud son of both cultures and in anything that I do, whether it's cooking food or, you know, writing my columns and writing my books, I try to showcase the best of both of my heritages. I think it's really important to talk about, you know, the Chinoy culture and the Chinoy identity. At home, we spoke Chinese, we ate Chinoy food, we observed a lot of Chinoy feasts. Uh, we would use, you know, we would burn incense, we would uh, make offerings to the gods and the ancestors. And then I would go to school and, you know, in a Jesuit school where we would learn under an American system. And then I would hang out with my friends who are mostly Pinoys and they would teach me Filipino culture. So growing up, I always felt like I was being pulled in three different directions. I would change or at least hide part of myself whenever I hung out with one specific set of people. It took a while until I realized that, you know what, I am Chinoy, you know, I am Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, and I can be both when I hang out with people. Food has always been an important part of my life. You know, we're not a particularly close family. You know, we don't hug. You know, we don't hang out for fun. But the one thing we do is we eat together. If you have food, we will come. I just think that maybe my family was a little bit surprised when my love for food transcended just eating on Sundays, right? My love for food actually pushed me to, to seek this career of being a chef. When I was younger, being a chef was a blue-collar job. There was no clear career path. I think that was the image of 
the culinary career that they had when I first broached the idea of working as a chef. But I think now it's changed. Now you can see a lot of Chinois are into the food business. They realize that you know creating restaurants is actually a really great career path for those that are very passionate about food. You know, after culinary school, I sort of made it a point to cook for the family often. You know, it's, a, it's, it's been a fun journey because I sort of got to know not only my family's tastes, but also, you know, how I should proceed as a chef. Uh, when I first came home from culinary training, the first meal I made for my family um, was a very traditional French meal pork with charcuterie sauce, right? It's a, it's a brown Espanol sauce with pickles and mustard. And I cooked it perfectly. And the family was like, man, it's okay. And I'm like, what? And so I, I sort of realized that, wait, I have to cook for my audience, right? And then so I started uh, to change what dishes I would cook for the family. I tried to see what they like, what they don't like. Over the years, I've sort of realized that the saying is true. The, the longer you are working as a chef, the more you gravitate towards the food that you grew up with. So in 2016, I decided to go on this, this personal mission, right? I wanted to build public school libraries around the Philippines. I've always loved reading books, and I know for a fact that our public schools never have enough budget left over to create their own libraries. So I decided I wanted to build libraries. And I didn't want to ask people for money, you know, because if you keep asking people for money, they're just going to tire of it. They're going to stop giving you uh, donations, right? So what I wanted to do was create an experience where you could eat great food and still contribute to building that library. And so I created a pop-up series. Um, and uh, I started cooking here in the Philippines and also in the US with all of the funds that we earn going straight to building a public school library. I've, I've always, you know, had this idea that people wanted to eat fancy food, right? Like, I mean, you're gonna pay a certain price for this pop-up. And so we wanted to make really fancy food. There was a lot of dishes that we enjoyed growing up that I never put on the menu because who would want to eat that? That's, ho that's home-style food. And during one of the pop-ups in Seattle, um, I was working with um, Chef Melissa Miranda in Seattle and with Natalia Rojas. You know, we needed one more dish. And after a really long time of, of, of brainstorming, I, I finally said, you know, without thinking, you know, there's this soup my grandmother used to make. It's very simple, but it's delicious. I'm like, no, 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 let's not do that. It's too simple. And both of them, you know, their eyes lit up and they said like, no, 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 no. what is that soup? Tell us what that soup is. My grandmother used to make this fish head and ginger soup. And then she would add uh, lomi or udon noodles. And that's pretty much it. That's the only flavor you get. And um, they're like, that sounds awesome. And I'm like, are you sure? I mean, this is like, if you take a look at the bowl, it's just this milky broth and noodles, that's it. And they're like, no, 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 they're gonna love it. They're gonna love it. And so I made it. I tasted the soup. It tasted just like my grandmother's. We served it. You know, some of the diners actually, after the dinner, came up to me and said that the soup was one of the best things they've ever had. That was really a light bulb moment for me because all along, I've been trying to avoid serving dishes that I thought were too simple or too homemade or too Chinoy for the general audience, when in fact, that is what makes me different. That is what is going to make me a more unique chef, is to create dishes and recreate dishes that I grew up eating. So I would define Chinoy cuisine as, you know, the dishes that were Chinese in origin but have already been adapted to Filipino taste. I've been trying to push the phrase Chinoy cuisine. And it's not Chinese, it's not Pinoy, it's Chinoy cuisine. When the Chinese settlers came here, they decided to cook their dishes but use Filipino ingredients and use some Filipino techniques. And that gave birth to what I would like to call Chinoy cuisine. Lumpia, for example, is uh, one of my favorite subjects to study, right? If you look at our Chinoy lumpia, the one you can get at uh, Binondo, 
It's a cooked filling with sweet peanuts and scrambled eggs, all wrapped up, right? But now, when you talk about lumpia, there are so many more variations. Lumpiang Shanghai, which has meat inside, Lumpiang toge, bean sprouts inside, and both are deep fried. So these are Chinoy dishes, right? They originated from a Chinese dish, but now have been adapted to Filipino tastes. You can hear that sound. You know you've made it right. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag One Chinoy is brought to you by Cardinal Santos Medical Center Progressive Laboratories SM Supermalls Waters Philippines Evergreen Cereal AgriPro, Premier Nutrition Incorporated Global Diesel and GU Engineering H&E Manufacturing Corporation Veco Paper Corporation Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation Ford Tractor Philippines, your long-term agriculture partner Japan Parts Trading Center Pinturado Seliado Protectado Sigurado AquaGuard Elastomeric Waterproofing Paint Chua Beng Tang Alejandro Ko Jimmy C. Nung Family. Enrique Chua. Chan Kwan. Wu Chongzhen. Li Pue Chin. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. So uh, I had been working as a chef for about seven or eight years. And then I got this call from my friend. She calls me and says, look, there's this competition. You should join it. We always talk about making a cooking show. Why not try to, to get one? And so I joined this contest called the Clash of the Token Ones. And the prize of that competition would be hosting your own cooking show. And you know, fortunately enough, they, they picked me as one of the finalists. And so we underwent this reality show competition. Long story short, I was very fortunate to emerge as the winner. And the, the prize was actually a contract for 10 episodes. And so we created the cooking show called Curiosity Got the Chef. We started shooting. You know, the, the first thing that came into my mind was please don't let us get canceled, you know, because I, I've always heard about TV shows getting canceled after two episodes, right? So my goal was to just finish the 10 episodes. But midway through shooting the season, I think it was like the seventh or eighth episode, they told us that the network wanted three more episodes and I was so happy. And then after we shot the 13, they told me that they, we, you know, we were getting renewed for a second season. And I was like, whoa, this is way more than I needed. And then, you know, it just, we just kept working. We just kept chugging along. And um, we did the show for actually seven years, seven seasons. So really, really quite happy with what we created. You know, one of the things that made me realize that we were doing a good job was that they didn't think I was Filipino. <laughs> they saw that I was, I looked Chinese, but I spoke English. And the production was so good that they thought I was a Singaporean, right? So I would get approached during events and say like, Oh, you know how to speak Tagalog? I'm like, oh, kasi dito ako lumaki. So it was really kind of strange for them to see a Chinoy host an English program on a cable network. You know, I never really realized what it meant that I was there for quite some time to have a Chinoy face be the first local cooking show on Lifestyle Network. I love working with food. I love writing about food. I think about food when I'm eating food. You know what I mean? The reason why is that food is the great equalizer. I love stories. That's my drug. That's my pastime, right? I love hearing about stories. I love telling stories. 
And when you have food on the table, I find that people are more open to talking. You know, one of my shows called Let's Do Lunch. The idea behind this show is I wanted to interview celebrities. And I wanted to be different from, you know, a usual showbiz talk show, right? A, a showbiz talk show would have the host and the guest and then they'd ask them like all the questions about, oh, are you pregnant? Or who are you dating now? Blah, blah, blah. So I wanted to have a, an interview show that was different. And I knew that by placing food, like I would cook food for my guests before we do the interview. And when you have food on the table, you find that people are more open to telling their stories. Because when you cook the food and you place it in front of them, it's something that you can share, right? Everybody has to eat. So that is your common denominator. And when you have something that unites you already, all the stories just come out. You find that people are more willing to talk, people are more willing to share their stories, and people are also more open to hearing new ideas. So one of the more important things I learned being Chinoy was delayed gratification, right? We were always taught that you don't always have to enjoy your reward immediately. And this really taught me the value of patience and also of looking forward, right? Sometimes when you succeed, is this enough? Because maybe what you need to do is get whatever reward you have or whatever money you have or whatever success you have and use it, translate it to something even greater. And that's really helped me along. Whenever I do something, my next thought is always, how can I reinvent myself, right? Okay, I succeeded here, but how can I change myself? How can I reinvent myself so that we can get to greater heights. Another thing that my parents taught me as a Chinoy would be hard work. I think that really helped me along, you know, especially in culinary school. I was like one second away from giving up. But, you know, there's something, there's something in me that was saying that if you want what you want, then you have to work for it. Here are three of my favorite things. We have Zitan Bing with Tabanan Talangka. And then we have beef and broccoli with oyster cream sauce and acharang sibuyas Tagalog. And then we have heirloom rice biko with muscovado and oolong tea syrup with langka, papaya, and mangoes. So harmony isn't just about relationships. It's also what you put on a plate. Nobody really uses this term. Um, I like to use it. It's called kwansi. And it means the value of building relationships. Uh, I never understood when we would go out and my dad would see one of his friends in the restaurant, he would um, secretly pay for his meal. But for my dad, it's very important to build relationships with different families. You know, we always want to leave a good legacy. We always want to create harmonious relationships um, with others because in the end, it will benefit everyone. For more information about today's episode, visit www.chinoy.tv and subscribe to our YouTube channel for full episodes of Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Hashtag One Chinoy is brought to you by Cardinal Santos Medical Center, Canis Prime Adult Dog Food, Feed Them with Love. Waters Philippines, PG Flex Linoleum, and Maruyama Tarpaulin, Evergreen Cereal, AgriPro, Premier Nutrition Incorporated, Global Diesel and GU Engineering, H&E Manufacturing Corporation, Veco Paper Corporation, Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation, Ford Tractor Philippines, your long-term agriculture partner. Pinturado, Seliado, Protectado, Sigurado, Aquaguard Elastomeric Waterproofing Paint. Chua Bang Tang. Alejandro Ko. Jimmy C. Nung Family. George Cham. William Goshako.
born in Tondo. My parents' business is a textile business in Divisoria. At a very young age, we were trained to use the calculator, learn the yardsticks, learn to talk to customer. As I grow up, I saw that uh, there is no shortcut in success and there's no shortcut if you want to get something in life. What we do is uh, we are the one who takes good care of the warehousing and the fulfillment of orders of all the resellers. And on the other side, the suppliers or the manufacturer are the one who takes care of the capital or the inventory of the products. And the resellers on the other side is the one that will market and sell the products without thinking about the inventories or the capital on the inventories. Almost all company during the heavy lockdown was really a challenge because of the limitations of uh, people going out, uh, employees' uh, accessibility to their workplace. But we were able to pivot our company and to be more resilient and to have a mindset that uh, we are also frontliners. One of our payment gateway is Gcash. So people can transact with our website through their Gcash platform. At the same time, the connectivity of uh, internet in our operations. By connecting with Globe Business, we were able to function very effectively and very efficiently. So there is always what we call connect kami lage or online kami lage because of the Globe Business partnership. In doing business, always take money as a reward rather than uh, always think of uh, how you will earn, how much is my profit. Always think of how you will solve the problem of your target market. And in reward, financially, people will buy your products or buy your service. Hi, I'm Chester C., President and CEO of Bilis Benta. Through the changing times, tuloy tayo SMEs. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Actually, 也是菲律宾高档酒店中第一家真正的上海餐厅 I think of harmony. It's not the parang, oh, what, what a happy relationship. It's more of the absence of gulo, the absence of strife, right? And I think that it's a good value to have. Who doesn't want peace? Right? Who doesn't want a quiet existence? At the same time, yung peace na yan, underneath it, there could be issues bubbling under the surface na hindi natin na explore because of that desire for harmony. That's it, Pansia, to reflect how I see harmony. That you can coexist with many different cultures and many different ways of being and still be who you are. It doesn't take away from your identity and your whole essence of being. I think it's extra important now, given that we live in a world where everyone can be a citizen of anywhere. The late pastor in my church would always say, you know, you, you guys, you, you speak a really strange language. You know, you will say, bola sayang, you know. But I think it enriches the whole pot. If I throw in my Chineseness, my being Filipino, my being a woman, my being a journalist, my everything. And all that harmonizes, you know, it, it, it finds a way to harmonize itself. Say the instance of the chef, it, it's a conscious harmonizing. So if you ask an older Chinoy what harmony means, most of them will probably think of harmony as keeping your head down, just doing your work, 
don't make waves, that's probably what you're gonna think. That's a semi-young Chinoy. My definition of harmony is you first have to have harmony within yourself, right? You have to accept who you are. So as Chinois, we have to first accept that we are Chinois, that we are Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. We have to embrace both cultural identities first. Once you have that, then you can build harmonious relationships with others because you will be able to draw the line. You will be able to tell them that, okay, this is my culture, this is also my culture. So you have to accept me for all of this, right? We no longer have to hide parts of ourselves when dealing with others. I think that's what true harmony means. I think the modern Chinoy for me is someone who is proud of their Chinese heritage, but also proud of being a Filipino citizen. So for me, a Chinoy is someone that embraces both cultures and then finds ways to showcase both cultures and to represent both cultures honorably. I'm proud to be Chinoy because just, just take a look at the history of our country. Um, whatever it is that I may have achieved in my life, um, that is built on the backs and shoulders of all of the Chinois in history. You know, I stand on a history of hard work. I stand on a history of heroism, of, of uh, ingenuity, and that makes me proud. You know, I'm proud to be just another cog on a long line of heroes. I love being a part of this One Chinoy campaign because I think that the only way to move forward is to let people know, is to let people see the beauty of our Chinoy culture. I love that this campaign is boldly showing um, the entire country that the Chinoy culture has a lot of history, has a lot of heritage that we can be proud of. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag One Chinoy was brought to you by Doña Maria Premium Quality Rice, our Filipino farmers' hard work and dedication in every grain. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia Pacific. Chinoy TV would like to thank. get into the Great Wall. I feel like it's just a thing that the Chinese community shares, but it's the same act as trying to incorporate yourself in another person's family.这要从我厨师学校毕业以后说起从小也是吃着上海菜长大的进行多样性的变化
也是菲律宾呃高档酒店中第一家真正的上海餐厅。呃，说到上海菜中点心，非常出名的是以小笼包为主。那么我觉得呢，我们餐厅的小笼包呢，呃，是餐厅中点菜率最高的一个呃点心品种。也有很多的了解上海菜的客人呢，来了我们餐厅品尝了小笼包以后，他们第一的感觉是，嗯，这是正最正宗的上海味道。那么对于热菜来说呢，啊、呃，我实际上建议您，如果来我们餐厅，啊、呃，从品尝啊、呃、松子、糖醋的黄鱼和那个红烧肉开始打开你的味蕾。然后呢，你可以通过这两道菜来了解上海菜，来品尝上海菜。呃，总体来说呢，食物的味道，真实的味道是最重要的。首先呢，我们呃确保配料的新鲜度和食品的安全性。当然，我们希望食物看起来还是非常不错的，但是用美味的味道来满足客人的味蕾。呃，一定是最主要的，也是让客人是非常难忘的。值得注意的是，我们餐厅所有的食物呢是不用任何的添加剂和味精。我们正在经历一些季节性的变化和调整，并计划很快推出一些新的上海菜。呃，目前来说呢，我们提供了一种新啊、呃、一款新的招牌菜，呃，我们称它为是帝王鸡，它是用八宝糯米来填充，然后呢经过完美的烘烤，呃，然后在您的餐桌上呢，我们会用 a p r o d b r a n d y 去点燃。啊、呃，到目前为止，它非常的受欢迎。啊、呃，上海菜既令人兴奋，又有情怀，它是一定会对菲律宾人有吸引力的。啊、呃，为了能亲自品尝和尝试正宗的上海菜，啊、呃，我邀请大家来华园体验，希望到时候能见到你们，为你们展示上海菜的魅力。